Our today's topic is primary open angle glaucoma. Glaucoma continues to be a major public health problem. It is the second leading cause of blindness worldwide after cataracts. In the United States, primary open angle glaucoma is the most common form of glaucoma and is the leading cause of irreversible blindness in African Americans. This disease is typically asymptomatic until advanced visual field loss occurs. Some of the risk factors for primary open angle glaucoma have been extensively described and studied, including elevated intraocular pressure, advancing age, family history, African ancestry, myopia, and perhaps presence of certain systemic diseases, such as diabetes and hypertension. The precise mechanism of increased resistance to aqueous outflow remains unclear and is currently an active focus of research. At present, all our treatment strategies are directed at lowering intraocular pressure. Initial treatment is usually started with topical or oral medications. However, with progressive damage, laser trabeculoplasty may be considered as an adjunctive therapy, followed by incisional glaucoma surgery, either with trabeculectomy or glaucoma drainage implant. Glaucoma describes a group of conditions in which there is characteristic cupping of the optic disc with corresponding visual field defects, due to retinal ganglion cell loss. It is a progressive condition and is the most common cause of irreversible blindness worldwide. Primary open angle glaucoma POG, is a subset of the glaucomas defined by an open, normal appearing anterior chamber angle and raised intraocular pressure IOP, with no other underlying disease. If there is an identifiable underlying cause for raised IOP, this is termed secondary glaucoma. If the IOP is within normal limits, this is termed normal tension glaucoma NTG. Secondary glaucoma and NTG are not discussed in this section. The final common pathway for all potential etiologies of POG is optic nerve head damage. This is thought to be secondary to primarily ganglion cell axon loss, although loss of blood vessels and glial cells has also been observed. There are many postulated mechanisms of ganglion cell damage. There is good evidence that IOP-related mechanisms of optic nerve damage are very important in the pathogenesis of POG. By definition, patients with POG have raised IOP. Raised IOP is an important risk factor for the progression to POG from ocular hypertension OHT, and is the only common clinical finding in a wide variety of secondary glaucomas. IOP seems to be important even in NTG, as reduction of IOP was shown to reduce the risk of progression in these patients in the collaborative normal tension glaucoma study. In animal models, raised IOP always precedes glaucomatous nerve damage. It is thought that raised IOP primarily affects the optic nerve via the mechanical changes at the lamina cribrosa. There is consensus that the etiology of raised IOP is due to reduced aqueous outflow, rather than overproduction of aqueous. Several theories exist as to the cause of reduced aqueous outflow, see below. IOP is considered the most important risk factor for the development of POG, and remains the only known modifiable risk factor. Raised IOP in animal models results in glaucomatous optic neuropathy. Population studies have shown increased prevalence of glaucoma with increasing IOP. In patients with OHT, raised IOP but no signs of glaucomatous optic disc or visual field changes, higher IOP is associated with a higher risk of developing POG. This has been shown in the OHTS ocular hypertension treatment study and the EGPS European glaucoma prevention study. IOP is also thought to be a risk factor for NTG, despite IOP never being higher than the normal range. The prevalence of POG increases with age, even after compensating for the association between age and IOP. Age was also found to be an important risk factor for the conversion of OHT to POG in both OHTS and EGPS. Several studies have shown POG to be more prevalent in people of African-Caribbean descent compared with Caucasians. Not only is POG more prevalent in black race, its onset is earlier, and disease progression has been shown to be faster and more refractory to treatment. Black patients with OHT have been found to be more likely to progress to POG. The prevalence of POG in Hispanics is thought to be between that of African-Caribbean and Caucasian populations. Myopia has been shown to be a risk factor for POG in several studies. However, it can be difficult to diagnose true POG in myopic patients and controversy exists over whether it is real risk factor. 
Myopic optic discs are notoriously difficult to assess, and myopic patients may have visual field defects unrelated to any glaucomatous process. A thinner cornea has been shown to be a risk factor for OHT patients developing POG. This may be in part due to IOP measurement error IOP tends to be read lower in patients with thinner corneas, but there are also theories that a thinner cornea may indicate less rigid support structures around the optic nerve head, and a resultant increased propensity to damage. A first-degree relative with POG is a risk factor for the development of POG. This has been reported in several studies with the odds ratio varying from 3 to 13. The risk is thought to be higher still if the affected relative is a sibling. Several genes associated with POG have been identified, though these account for less than 5% of all POG in the general population. It is therefore thought that the hereditary aspect of POG is likely to be polygenic and that gene-environment interactions are important. A high prevalence of POG has been found in diabetic patients, and a high prevalence of diabetes has been found in POG patients. However, controversy exists as to whether diabetes truly is a risk factor for POG, as several large population studies have found no association. The role of blood pressure in the development of POG is complicated and there is no consensus. Hypertension may predispose to glaucomatous damage via increased peripheral vascular resistance in small vessels, while a low blood pressure may reduce the perfusion pressure of the optic disc. There is a relative paucity of data regarding the lifestyle and nutritional epidemiology of POG. There is a suggestion that exercise and a diet high in green collards and with a high omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid ratio are protective against POG.